Welcome back to Live Darts TV. I'm Phil, we're joined by Jay again, and this week we're joined by Australian darting sensation, Corey Cadby. Corey, thanks for joining us. No worries, boys, thanks for having me. Corey, welcome to Live Darts TV, thanks for joining us. First of all, how are you enjoying the UK? Thanks for having me, mate. Um, um, it's pretty cold, but enjoying it. Um, it's all business, so... I was going to say, it can't be anything like Australia weather-wise. Nah, it's definitely not. I'm um, looking forward to get home for the, um, just because of the weather and the family, but enjoying it here, yeah. First of all, um, congratulations on winning your tour card. Q School, when you got the job done on day one. What was the expectation like before you got there? Um, the, the expectation was to get a tour card. Um, I wanted it on the first day because that's what Kyle done and just wanted to show that I was capable of getting on first day as well. How did you handle that pressure? Because you were an overwhelming favourite before a dart was thrown to, to win a tour card. I um, don't really believe there was much pressure. I just played my own game and done the business on the board. I say, did you enjoy it? Like the quieter on the floor format to the stage or? No, I prefer the stage. No, that's, that's fair enough. I say, like you say, you got the job done, which is a massive achievement. Pressure lifted straight away. Yeah, definitely. Um, from there, obviously went to Wigan this weekend for the UK Open. The first time you've locked horns with the, all the big boys, how was that? Um, well, I went there thinking that I was going like, to win, get some money in my back pocket, um, but only coming out making a grand, it's, it's a lot harder. Um, everyone is capable of throwing really good averages, like, they could be one game hits, but that's all it takes for you to be knocked out of the tournament. Mind you, a massive highlight being current world championship, Rob Cross 6-2, um, massive achievement and a great scalp for yourself. Yeah, I was a little bit nervous, but just, like I said, um, play the board and got the win, so I was how delighted. How did you find like the streaming boards there compared to the normal boards? Much different? I wouldn't say it's much different, but you just know that there's a lot of people watching you around the world, so... and. Um, yeah, I like to put on a show. I'd say 44th on the order of merit as we stand. The UK Open on the horizon. Looking forward to your first UK Open? Yeah, I can't wait. Um, next weekend, I'm looking forward to the next weekend a bit more because I want to get a bit more dough on the um, order of merit, so um, I'll be then seated. I'd say, I don't want to jinx it, but normally a grand would be enough to, to get you there. You've already hit that target. So looking forward, would you like to be seated? Yeah, definitely want to be seated. Expectations for the UK Open, obviously different format, where you could, play, could be playing in um, the stage one minute, arena two the next, a new experience for you. How will you approach that? Exactly the same, or will there be different prep for different Yeah, no, I'll definitely prepare myself um, a little bit better, um, enjoy the atmosphere a bit, little bit, and um, bring it on. Obviously, Corey, it's going to be a mad dash for yourself, air miles wise, UK Open, and then flying back to get married. That must be um, daunting in the air miles and then flying all the way back for the next competition. Yeah, definitely. But um, yeah, the flight's going to go really slow flying back home to get married because I'm so excited and really happy to be able to get married to the girl of my dreams. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to it. I suppose the idea of wedding present, win the UK Open, fly home, get married. Oh, couldn't think of anything better, mate. How long are you going to be at home for before you then come back roughly? Um, it shouldn't be that much. It shouldn't be long, um, but I've got to speak to the partner about... Um, obviously the date that I can leave and um, yeah we'll sort it out and be back on the English soil before we know. Right guys now we've got the 60 second dart challenge how many points can Corey score in a minute? Corey over to you. Cheers boys. Great start. That's on. Yeah. Three three forty. Five seconds, can you get any more in? And done. <coughs> Only two darts managed on the last one, big man.
Australia because it's really warm. Family time. Mark Elkin and Dimitri. Home and away. Paris Hilton. Uh, playing against Phil Taylor. Michael Van Gerwen and Rob Cross at the Worlds. Aussie Rules. North Melbourne. Usain Bolt. Mixed Girl. Moving forward, what are your expectations for 2018? Obviously, Rob Cross won his tour card only a year ago, and then went and won the biggest prize of them all. Would you like to emulate him? Yeah, well, it shows that it can be done. Um, we all, well, everyone dreams to be world champion, and um, we'll just let the darts do the talking. Realistically, though, top 16 before the end of the year, is that a realistic expectation for um, yourself? I 100% want 32, but if I push into the 16, yeah, I'd be pretty delighted and happy with that. I guess another one is qualifying for all the major televised tournaments as well. Yeah, um, yeah, that's what I want. I want to play as much as I can on TV. Any of the TV tournaments you particularly like to play, and the ones you haven't made yet? Yeah, of course, but at the end of the day, if you're going to win, you're going to win. No, definitely. It'd be great to see you at the match play, I have to say. It's an old arena, um, like an old amphitheatre. You, I think you'd like that up. Yeah, I've never been, but I've heard so much about it. Um, yeah, that'd be really good. But we'll see how we go. No, obviously, the end of 2017 was a little disappointing for yourself. You um, failed to retain your world youth title and you missed the Worlds at Ali Pali. That must have been a huge disappointment. Yeah, to be honest, um, hats off to Dimitri the way he played, but um, I was just disappointed I didn't get to the World Championships. I wasn't really worried about the youth, to be fair. No, I failed. I'll say last year, you um, took the world by storm at, at the Worlds with one of the best games of the tournament against Joe Cullen. And I think a lot of people were looking forward to seeing you again this year. Yeah, of course, but now I'm over here. Um, I'll be in the ranking system, so I won't have to um, like play back home in Australia to qualify for the Worlds. So it's all on my own back now that I'm here, and I believe that'll be much easier than back home. Can you say, talk about back home, obviously you've made a massive life-changing decision to leave Australia and come and ply your trade in the UK. Was that a tough decision to make? Yeah. But my family's on my side and they're the reason why I'm doing it, so yeah, they made the decision for me. I suppose in one thing, the amount of travelling you did in Australia as well, Australia's a massive country, yeah. so you were away for long periods of time anyway back home? Yeah, yeah. Did you speak to Kyle at all before you made the decision? Obviously yeah, it's something that he did a couple of years ago. Kyle's been a, a really big help for me and um, when I've been down he's there to speak to and yeah, he's really good on that side and so is Mark as well. I'd say the time difference, obviously, FaceTiming back home, it's like over here, it's like marrying the times up must be difficult as well. Yeah, it is always hard because when we're sleeping, they're awake, obviously, and um, we probably get two to three hours to speak, um, like in the time hour difference, um, which is hard, but it'll all pay off in the end run. No, definitely. Again, when you came over here, you went to the spiritual home of darts, the lakeside, to watch Glenn win his second world title. What was the um, impression of Lakeside? Yeah, um, that's the home of darts. That's where darts basically become. Um, that was pretty cool. Um, BDO is completely different to the PDC. I'll never go watch another world <laughs> final there. I say you were quite lucky because normally PDC stars don't get welcomed to Lakeside, and they made you feel at home. You went and practiced with Glenn backstage as well, which was which was cool. Yeah, that was really good. Um, warm. But I've done us both well, practice for him and myself. I was, I was about to say, I'd say we put you in good stead for Q School practicing yeah, as definitely. well. And to be able to have the advantage of practice with him, it's a yeah, good advantage for me as well. Again, the year just got better as well. Signed the new deal with um, Darts Manufacturer Target. Must have been pleasing for yourself. Yeah, I was hanging to get myself out there on social media um, just to see of all the photo shoots and what they've done and what the process they've done. Um, but to be able to play with the new darts that I've got, I'm really happy with them. I'd say the um, social media went into meltdown when they released little snippets of the branding that they've done for yourself, yeah. your shirt and darts seem really positive. The new prototype, what was the uh, thinking behind that? Cause it's quite different to your old dart. To be honest, so I wanted a little bit of my dart, old dart in there, but I wanted a complete change. Um, obviously, they have the little bit of my own dart in there just to, so I don't think. 
because um, obviously darts is a thinking mentally game. Um, but yeah, it's a complete different dart and different weight and different size barrel and different points, so it's all completely different. How many, pro how many prototypes did you go through to get to the one you're playing with now? Uh, only the one. It's got to be a rare one normally, that's yeah. tinker with this, tinker with that. I, at the end of the day, they're going to be my dart, and if they're going to work, I've got to make them work. No, definitely. I'll say we can look forward to seeing them out very, very soon. I'll say I know everyone was like, oh, when are they coming out, when are they coming out, when Target released the picture of yeah. the, the prototype, which is, which is cool. Yeah, definitely. So, Corey, we've all seen Corey Cabby on stage, away from darts. What does Corey get up to? How do you relax? How do you switch off from the mental strain? Well, it all depends where um, whereabouts I am. If I'm back home, I'm just a family man, being a dad to the, the two kids and the two step kids. Um, but also just be a handyman around home. And but if I'm over here, um, I'm Mac sheep, hanging off Mac. <laughs> um, we get around, um, taste a lot of different kind of foods. Has he got you supporting Villa yet? No, I'm not interested in um, that f uh, football. No, I say soccer's not really huge back in Australia, is no. it? So back home, Corey, the sports fan. What other sports you enjoy? AFL and cricket. Nice. Um, the cricket Ashes went really well for Australia. Yeah, um, of course. Smashed us. But then the one day is complete opposite, which was a strange one because normally Australia blitz us at one day cricket. Yeah, no. Nah. We have our I. Our A grade cricketers in the test, we put our B grade in and play against your one siders. Well, you've done us once already. Do you want to catch much of the Big Bash over here because of the time difference? Uh, I, don't, I don't have Sky TV um, in my hotel, but I love the Big Bash and my, I, I support Renegades, Melbourne Renegades. And yeah. That no, was good, good tournament. We watched a lot of it over here, which was, which was really pleasing, sir. I prefer the 2020 over all. It's just over and done with. And, get to see a bit of excitement with the sixes and good shots. Yeah, as I say, touching on cricket, obviously England dropped Ben Stokes quite controversially. If that was David Warner, would Australia have left him out? Of course not. We don't forget who we are. <laughs> no, that's good. I'll say, moving forward, I'll say, looking forward to seeing a lot of Corey Cadby this year. Thanks very much for joining us. Always a pleasure, no worries, Corey. boys. Thanks for having me. Cheers. The Unibet Premier League kicked off in Dublin last week and certainly didn't disappoint. Jamie, what were your thoughts of the opening night? Yeah, fantastic atmosphere, fantastic standard as well. We saw a lot of high checkouts, a lot of high averages. I think the tone's been set for a brilliant 16 weeks. Yeah, exactly, absolutely. I'll say the first game as well set the tone for the whole night. Simon Whitlock upsetting the odds, rather, by beating Mentor Sulevic. Yeah, great result for Simon to get off to winning words at the first time of asking. I think he, he silenced a lot of doubters. Menzel looked comfortable early on, 3-1 up. Uh, he missed that one dart to go four and up, and, and Simon sort of galvanised himself, got back and, and turned it around really well. Yeah, I didn't see 106 average from Whitlock coming at all. Yeah, absolutely. But he ran out 7-5 winner, so off with two points. Now from there, it was the iffy result of the night, the Gary Anderson, yeah. Michael Smith um, game. Anderson was 5-1 up cruising, and the back went again and only averaged 82 in the end. Yeah, really strange sequence of events. I mean, Gary looked comfortable 5-1, there was no sign of the back injury, but somehow managed to go 5-1 up, as you say, the back problems took hold, his level dropped and Smith jumped all over it. Yeah, massively problems for Gary Anderson moving forward, because if the back can't hold out, then a decision has to be made, and made quite quickly. Yeah, we saw him pull out of the three UK Open qualifiers, and like you say, I think a decision has to be made earlier on, so if needs be, a replacement can be brought in and it doesn't mess up the fixture list too much. But having said that, a great start for Michael Smith, regardless of Gary Anderson's back problem, two points on the board, early doors. Yeah, of course, he obviously got relegated in his first season in 2016, he started off with a few defeats, so to get that first win eases a bit of the pressure and he can relax and settle in, he had a great weekend at the UK Open qualifiers, final on Friday, one on Sunday, so obviously that will give him a lot of confidence as well. No, definitely, third game on, we saw a draw, we had Barney against Daryl Gurney, a strange game, I thought. The crowd were mainly on Barney's side, which was surprising considering it was on the Emerald Isle, where you'd have thought Gurney would have had the lion's share of the support, but it didn't seem to be that way. Yeah, obviously Barney gets well back to wherever he goes. Out of the five games, I fancy that one to be a draw, and I think it's not a bad start for both players. I think they would have taken a point before it started. Obviously a better result maybe for Barney, coming from 6-3 down for 6 all but he's shown that tenacity that he's displayed in the last few seasons and become renowned for in the Premier League. I completely agree. Then we had the star attraction of the night. We had Michael Van Gogh in against world champion Rob Cross. And let's be fair, Michael was just sensational. Well, he played it down beforehand, didn't he? He said he, was, he wasn't on a revenge mission, but he came out and he, he let his darts do the talking 7-2, 100.8 average. 
I think there's the statement gone down and, and Cross has really unleashed the beast in Van Gogh. Yeah, every time Michael's been beaten on a big stage, he bounces back better than ever. And like we said, getting beaten in the world, he's gone away and somehow he's even more hungry than what he was before, which is quite frightening. Yeah, well, we saw that the last two times he suffered close defeats in, in the World Championship to Gary Anderson and then Roman van Barneveld. The following seasons, he's come back and just blitzed every, pretty much every tournament. And then the last game on was Peter Wright against um, another debutant in Go in Price. Again, Peter Wright throwing with a stupid setup of a dart, mm. which didn't work. Um, lucky to get a point, I thought, in the end. Well, I think Peter was the architect of his own downfall with those darts. They're very much like Phil's last setup of target. Uh, didn't suit his throw, he didn't look comfortable. Somehow managed to get himself 5 1 up, and then his level dropped massively. Uh, and Gerwin again jumped all over it, as we saw with Michael Smith. I'd say a good point for Gerwin on opening night, I think, because beforehand, Price was quite heavily backed and favourite with the bookies. So, again, he's got off with a good point. Yeah, I, th I think he, I was impressed with how he settled into the whole occasion, the atmosphere. He didn't look out of place on that stage, and I think he'll, he'll hold his own in this Premier League. No, I agree. So, Dublin was a massive success for the Unibet Premier League. This week we go to Cardiff and what a week it should be. Yeah, we're looking forward to it again and see if Simon Whittle can follow up his first win and how Rob Cross can bounce back because there's that added pressure on his shoulders after that first defeat. Didn't have a great weekend at the UK Open qualifiers so it'll be a bit of pressure on him to get that first two points on the board. Right then, here we have our tip section and we're going to night two in Cardiff. Last week we had a fantastic treble that won. It was enhanced to 5-2 to two with title sponsors Unibet. Hope you backed it because if you did you would have made some money. To kick us off, we have Michael Smith against Daryl Gurney. What's your thoughts? Well, Michael Smith got off to a winning start last week against a below par Gary Anderson who was struggling with a back injury, but he then proved that that was no flash in the pan. He reached the final of Friday's UK Open qualifier in Wigan, went one better on the Sunday, beating Michael Van Gogh on the way to the title. His confidence is going to be sky high, and I fancy him as the value of the two to kick on and get the two points again there. I agree. I think he's an absolute huge price against Gurney. Gurney hasn't fired at all yet this season, didn't at the UK's at the weekend, and I think there's value in Smith as a single bet alone. I don't know what you think yeah, of the single. Yeah, I agree. He's the value of the two. There. Agreed. Right, so second game we have Rob Cross against Simon Whitlock. Cross needs a win. Yeah, it was always going to be difficult for him to stay, sustain the standard that he showed at the Worlds. He was played an unstoppable MVG last week, so there was very little he could do there. Obviously, Van Gogh in a season Premier League campaigner, but he struggled at the weekend in the UK Open qualifiers. And it's going to be a big test for him to bounce back. And you know, the longer it goes on where he hasn't registered that win in the Premier League, the more pressure is going to come on him. But See, Simon was the pre-tournament favourite for, for relegation, so Cross would have looked at this game before the season started and said, you know, this should be a bank of two points. Agreed. It'll be interesting to see if Whitlock can back up last week's result as well. Can he go and average 106 again? I don't think he can personally, and for me, Cross wins. He's going to have to you know, follow up Cross's leg-on-leg -leg pressure, which you know, could bring out a big average. Simon, again, had a good weekend, so he's, he's full of confidence and he's, he's silent the, silenced the doubters last week. No, I agree. Moving on, this game always has a little bit of spice. It's Michael Van Gogh and against Peter Wright. I know they, they're always friendly to each other, but there's always that little bit of needle from a few years ago. Yeah, Michael's got a great head-to-head -head record against Peter. He seems to have a bit of an Indian sign over him. As we discussed in the first show, he's a man on a mission this year and he's come out and proved it so far. He won the Masters. He then extended that on beat and run to 20-plus games. I thought it was a brilliant Michael Smith stopped him. I just think you know, he's mastered this Premier League format and you know, if Peter Wright sticks with the same darts from last week, he is going to struggle. He's going to have to go, you know, go back to the drawing board, choose a setup that's going to be right to take on Van Gogh and, and come out and give Agreed. it a go from the off. To back singly, Michael's a little bit short, but for me, I'd take him on the handicap. Michael Van Gogh in minus 2.5 legs for me. Yeah, I think he wins comfortably. He's, he's going to overpower right on the scoring stakes and yeah, I think 7-3, seven, 7-4. Seven, Fourth game on. Interesting, we have Gerwin in Price against Gary Anderson. Now, this has been priced as a fit Gary Anderson. Now, we all know that's not the case, and I think Gerwin Price at 2 to 1 represents huge value. Absolutely, I agree. And obviously, Gerwin's going to be playing in Wales in front of a home crowd. He's going to have massive support. That could work one of two ways. You know, it could pile more pressure on him, or it could put the pressure on Anderson. Anderson missed the three UK Open qualifiers due to injury. Any sign of that back problem from last week, and he's going to struggle. I think, like I say, Gerwin at least plus 2.5. If not, I would take him on at the win price. Again, I wouldn't have him a part of an acker because we're guessing on Gary Anderson's fitness, but as a single, I think Gerwin Price at 2-1 to one looks an absolute steal. Yeah, I agree. Right, last game of the night, we have Barney against Mensal Sudovic. Again, the Barney army will be out in force in Cardiff. Yeah, the Premier League is one of a select few events that Barney really seems to rise to the occasion to. I think he, he, he dug deep last week to come from 6-3 down to pick up a point. He beat Mensah 11-7 in the semi-finals of the Masters, so he's, he's got that on him a couple of weeks ago. 
And I think Barney is the value of the two again to, to get that first win. No, agreed. I, I like Barney heavily here. Mensa hasn't really lived up to the expectation since he last played in Cardiff, which was when he won the Champions League. He hasn't quite hit those heights. I know he averaged 103 last week, but I just think that Barney will, ha will have too much. Obviously, great memories for Mensa going back into that motor point arena, so it'll feel like that same stage you want to pick up from where he left off. But I think Barney, again, in front of his partisan crowd. Mensa's form's just been a little bit off since he won the Champions League, so he's, he's going to be under pressure if he doesn't manage to pick up at least a point from us. No, I completely agree. On screen now, everyone, is our Acker for the week. It's there. All the odds are with Unibet. Also, the title sponsors have a magnificent sign-up offer running at the moment. It's bet 20, get 50 for the Unibet Premier League. Well worth it if you haven't got a Unibet account, so I'd highly recommend that. Right, folks, now it's over to Corey again. How many bullseyes can he hit in a minute? Corey, take it away. Yeah, boy. Runs the start. Miles away. Still one. Still one time for That's it. Ooh. Two squeeze in. Thanks, boys. My tail from the tour would have to be in Glasgow. Um, was walking to go get um, Chinese. Um, was it was a pretty dark um, laneway, and um, Kyle stumbled over his own feet. Um, it took him forever to hit the deck because he was trying to save his phone, but eventually hit the deck and he couldn't get up. And yeah, it was all in laughing fits and we couldn't help him, it was, it was just too funny. Right everyone, thanks for joining us here at Live Darts TV again. I'm Phil, this has been Jamie, we look forward to seeing you again soon.